Greetings. I'm out here on a walk with my trusty satchel all packed up to make a quick video about what all I have in my bag and like what I keep with me and how I organize things, all that. Last night, I heard a sound in the wilderness, like a screaming bark. It was like two of them, two screaming barks. And it's most likely that it's either a bobcat, a lynx, a fox, or a cougar. That interaction makes me far more in tune with my place out here. I'm looking for a good spot before I begin recording the video so I can have peace of mind. There's a rock right there. And that looks like one of the best lookouts near the scamp. So we're gonna go climb up on there, look around, see what we see, and then we'll sit down and record a video. We made it on top of said rock. I don't see any mountain lion poop up here. So, I think we're good. Here's the stand. Currently looking for a spot that will be blocked from the wind. This little area seems swell. This will be the spot. Okay. So here's my satchel. This is my old paintball slinger pack. I had a whole backpack that this thing came with, so this would like sling onto the front of the backpack. But I was climbing in Swope Park in Kansas City after a paintball practice, and somebody knocked out my windshield and took all my paintball gear out of the trunk. But luckily, <laughs> I had this guy at home. So I just, before our Puerto Rico trip, resurrected him and used it as like my supplemental bag to my main backpack for Puerto Rico. And now I've been kitting it out with all the stuff for Nomad Life. This sling actually came with our new Mavic Pro. And I took that and put it on here. And before that I just had like little Molly straps for shoulder straps, it worked pretty well. Got my trusty old Nalgene. I love this guy, Melanzana, this company is this guy that I'm wearing. They're out of Leadville, Colorado. Their gear is incredible. This is like the best mid layer that I've ever found. It's got a little drawstring so you can zip out wind if you need to. It's great for snowboarding and stuff. And it's a relatively quick drying material. It's like a polyester blend, um, works great. And it's got a little hoodie pocket. Badass piece of gear. Anyway, this size water bottle or Nalgene I love because it's small enough to where I can like fit it in my pocket easily. So even though it's not a big bottle, I end up drinking more water than I otherwise would just because I can always have this on me and it's easy to refill, so. Agua. Next part within our kit, I guess one of the most important pieces is my little iPad. Little iPad. This is a iPad mini 2. It was first released late 2012, 2013, something. I've used it for a long time, primarily for reading. I keep all my books on here so that I don't have to have physical books around because our living space is so small. So I read most books digitally. And at first that was really hard for me, but I realized that it's really nice to be able to pop into different books just to kind of suit whatever mood that I'm in. And it's nice to be able to bookmark and highlight and take notes and then know that all of that is saved digitally so then I can go back and access that if I need to. Especially for blog posts and stuff, it's been clutch. To make this guy useful, recently I got this little Zag keyboard. And this is what I've been typing the majority of my blog posts and things on. And the beauty of this little system is I can charge it with batteries like this. I think this is the BioLite Charge 10. It's just a 10 watt hour battery and it's dunk proof, sand proof and stuff because it has this little uh, silicone topper. I can take this, plug it into here and charge this on the go. I have a 2012 MacBook Air as well, and that was my primary work machine until recently when I started using this guy more. I love that machine, it's excellent, it still runs just about like the day that I got it, but I have to charge it with AC power. In the Scamp, we have access to AC power through our Goal Zero Yeti batteries, 
but in the conversion from DC within the battery to AC to like boost up the voltage to go into the computer and then in the computer it goes back to DC so like in that conversion between DC to AC back to DC there is a significant entropy within that conversion or like power loss. With the iPad, it takes like very little energy to run it and I can charge it with things like this. This is the Pencil by 53. It's an excellent little stylus and drawing device, an input device for the iPad. And this predated the Apple Pencil. So for the older iPads, you can still use these, but they're kind of hard to come by. I had to, I bought it for like 35 bucks used on Amazon. Um, and I actually bought two of them just so that I have a backup. Um, they're really nice little styluses and they pair with the app called Paper um, by the same company. And when Apple released the Apple Pencil, this company actually started working on the app primarily and kind of dumped the uh, hardware idea. They quit making these, but they're still available. So pick one up if you have an old iPad and want Apple Pencil functionality with it. It works pretty good. Not as good as an Apple Pencil, but it is what it is. To charge all this stuff, we have a BioLite Solar Panel 5 Plus. This guy in the Plus has a battery up here. You don't have to carry an extra battery with you if you don't want to, if all you need is potential five watts of power and then whatever supplemental energy you get on top of that from leaving the panel out, then great, you can just take this. Cool thing about this guy is it has this little solar compass. When you're pointing it into the sun, it'll make a little shadow and you put the shadow in the middle of the crosshairs and then you know that you're at the optimum angle to collect sunlight. Well, that's really helpful, especially with a panel this small because if you aren't in the perfect configuration with the sun, you really won't make much power from a panel this small. So every little bit helps. All right. What's up next? I have these Bose headphones in. They're the Sound Sports. We picked these up for pretty cheap and they work great. I think I will go to the Sound Sport Free model, but it still has a wire between the two buds. If I want to like peel them off my head, I can just leave them around my neck and I think that would be really nice because being outdoors and stuff so much, the wireless buds, I feel like I would knock those out on a tree or something and then inevitably lose them in the snow or mud or something and then I keep this guy to keep the headphones safe so that they last as long as possible and then generally I'll have a lightning to USB cord in here with them just so that I always have a charging cord on me okay what else I love this little pack because it opens up like this we have all of these little storage compartments here and down here we have the cool stuff recently my buddy Matt Corona gifted us this Mavic Pro because it was just more than what he needed. He actually ended up getting a spark. This thing is incredible. The three axis gimbal, let's see, I believe it's three, versus the Spark's two axis gimbal makes a huge difference. So on the Spark, the gimbal has the ability to do this and this, but it can't do this. Anytime that you want to shoot a shot that does this sort of action, on the Spark, the gimbal is locked to the nose of the drone. You have to like physically fly the whole drone to change this sort of trajectory. Whereas with this, this gimbal can turn like this, like side to side. As you're flying side to side, it can stay locked on the camera, let's say, you know? and the spark can't do that. So this makes a huge difference for doing different like variable angle cinematic footage. Cool thing about the spark versus this though is to charge this guy, I have to use AC power and pull the battery out and stick it into a charger, which I have. And since this has like double the flight time per battery that the spark does, 25 minutes of flight time, which is quite a lot because the spark is at 12 or 13. That way I don't have to charge this as much. If I bring a spare battery, then I have like 50 minutes of time in the air, which is a ton of time. Picture, you know the old Donkey Kong game, old Super Nintendo games, where you have to be super focused in the game. On the cart level, let's say, where you're chikong, chikong. On those types of levels, you have to be like super zoned in, otherwise you'll inevitably crash and waste a life. When I am flying drones, I feel like that. Really zoned in, like a super intense video game for the whole time that I'm doing it. If we're strategic about what kind of shots that we want to get and the angles and everything that we want to use, honestly, the, we can make use of the spark with the two batteries that we have because that's like 25 minutes of flight time. 
but with this we get double that if I bring an extra battery which is really significant only bummer is we can't charge it off of USB if I had the spark with me with this kit that I have even with the solar panel I could fly it infinitely with just what I have on me which is pretty incredible but with the Mavic I have to plug up to AC power so if I was going on like a long backpacking trip or something I would likely still bring the spark so that I could keep it charged as we go. We're loving this thing so far and I'll put it up in the air in a little bit and we can scout around the area some. Another nice thing that I have in this bag, Dr. Bronner's chapstick. This I think is, it's really good, but I'm still partial to Burt's Bees. Sorry, Dr. Bronner's, I love what y'all stand for, but this is just a grocery bag. Simple like draw bag. So when we're foraging for mushrooms or uh, teas or whatever, something like this is always super clutch. And then just for if we go somewhere and have like wet clothes or if we have an extra towel or blanket or I don't know, anything, it's just nice to have a small spare bag to throw things in. So well, here's where the grocery bag is. Now we're going into this pocket here. I have a extra mic cord for this mic that's on the camera so that I can plug it into my phone. A lightning to micro USB. So this is so I can hardwire the drone controller to the iOS device that I'm using, primarily the iPad that I showed you earlier. This just makes it a hardwired connection so that you don't have any Bluetooth interference or anything. An SD card adapter to micro SD with an extra micro SD card in here. But I like to keep that in there just in case we forget a card with one of our cameras. If we get to whatever spot we're going and don't have what we need, that sucks. So, <laughs> extra battery for the M50, and that's what I'm shooting on right now. And lastly, I just got this guy recently. It's a SD card reader to lightning, and this is what I use to pull the footage off of the cameras and put them on my iPad. Now we're in this pocket, little zipper pocket. Within that pocket, I keep a micro SD, or micro USB to USB charger. Then I have a shoelace. <laughs> and I'm actually using the um, other half of the shoelace connected to the side of the M50. After I watched a master class by Jimmy Chin, I got an or he gave us an idea on having a carabiner attached to the camera that's so that you can like wrap it around your hand quick and get like a good grip on the camera or you can like clip it to a, a bag if you're in a precarious position just in case you drop it. Super clutch, but I'm keeping this in here just in case I need it. And then a full-size gear tie. I talk about these all the time, they're my favorite thing. They're like grown-up Lego tools. You can fix anything with them, and if you come up with like a creative idea to attach one thing to another thing, you can use this to pull it off. And I've even used this to fasten a kayak to the top of a car when we were on a float trip. And I don't suggest that you do that, but it's just a testament to how strong they are. This is the small size gear tie I'll use just for like wrapping cords and different things like that. Just nice to have. Down here we got extra straps. These are the straps that I had on this backpack before I put the sling on it. So if I need to convert it to a backpack, like if I just wanted to wear it on my chest, if I had another pack on, I could do that. This is my trusty old bench made. I love this knife. It's got the concave blade shape. So for carving small sticks especially, and for just like peeling off, like if you wanna cook a s'more or something, you can do that really quick because the shape of the wood fits really well onto the blade of the knife. And then it's got the tanto blade. So if you need to use it to like poke through things or as an awl, you got that. I've had this knife for at least five years now. It's a great knife. Last compartment here. I have a little dry bag. Whenever we're skiing or snowboarding, I like to keep my phone in this. So it's just nice to have an extra dry bag just in case. And sometimes I'll even keep trail mix or nuts in here. It's a nice little bag to have. And then I have a big Ziploc. And this is big enough that it could kind of even protect the drone. Simple, cheap dry bag that was laying around and I was like, ooh, I should put that in my bag just in case. So that's this little bag on the outside of the bag. It has this Velcro strap and I love this for when I peel off layers, if we're on a hike, I can just roll them up and then Velcro them to the outside of the bag. On either side here, it has these little clips and this backpack is just so well made. This is like 10 years old. This was actually for a paintball gun so the barrel would come out here and the 
tank would come out the back here and then you have your hopper popping out the top. So you could like wear your marker on your back and this is all that you would need. That's the little backpack. Two other things I forgot to mention that I brought with me are our Leatherman Skeletool. This is a super useful and pocketable tool. I love that it has a little clip on it so you can use it like a carabiner. And it's light enough to where I don't really notice it in this pocket. So I just slip it in here and then it doesn't clunk around a bunch. And then on my hip, I have this little ax for firewood. And then it's got a knife in the butt. I'm gonna collect a little bit of firewood from out here as I head back to the scamp because we're running low on hardwood. And there's a lot of dead dry wood out here that we can use to supplement for fuel. That's why I have this. Let's get this guy set. I like to have the drone and the controller paired before I connect them to the iPad to make sure that it's using this hard wired connection because it's much more reliable than it is over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Scamp. Let's see if we can see what else is doing. I don't see her. Maybe her and Camper on a walk. Should we go look? This is kind of a fun game, but I'm not seeing them anywhere. The landscape is incredible out here. These mesas are so cool. Still don't see Elsa in camp. They may just be inside this camp laying down and I didn't see them. That would be hilarious. I bet that's what's going on. My knees are about to explode. Oh. oh, I think I saw Camp. Yeah, I see him. Okay, Camp's in there. Oh, there's Elsa. Boom. <laughs> that's so funny. I can't get her to hear me. Hey. <laughs> I wonder if she'll see us if we go around the other side. Hey, Elsa! <laughs> hey! Okay, we'll bring it back. We did our best. Playing this with one hand right now. Which I've never done before, but I'm doing an okay job thus far. Whew, that was exciting. <laughs> I'm still not totally used to the Mavic versus the Spark. With the Spark, it was so small that I could just grab it, like pinch it, and then flip it real quick and turn it off, but with this guy, I flipped it a couple times, and I really gotta have space to do it because the props are so big. Still a little bit exhilarating. All right, let's go back to the scamp. We're gonna walk down through this gully and up and right to the scamp. I don't think I'll likely have the camera out as I hike because with the snow all over the ground and the rocks, it's super slick, and then under the snow is cacti, so. I'll probably just put the camera away, go back to the scamp, and then we can finish up there. I made it back. 
safely. That's all for today's video on Baron's gear and stuff. Have a wonderful day, and if you want any more videos, if you'd like me to dive into more things or whatever, shout, and I will do that. Peace.